Welcome to ASG. Uh, in this video tutorial we're going to do our second one which is the uh, look at AstroPixel processor for stacking images. Uh, in the first video we took a look at Deep Sky Stacker which is a free tool. Uh, very popular. A lot of people use it because it's free and it's fast. Um, but we're going to take a look at this one. Um, I kind of prefer AstroPixel processor. It does cost a couple hundred USD dollars which you got to factor that in um, if the tools that it creates and, and lets you use um, is useful for you. Uh, for me, I've kind of seen the difference between the two and I think the quality coming out of Astro Pixel Processor or APP is a little bit better. Uh, but you can be the judge of that. I think you could probably get away with doing almost the exact same thing in Deep Sky Stacker. Uh, it just takes a little bit longer um, and I like some of the other tools in case I do want to try something different in APP. So let's take a look at how to stack in APP and the process and then you can kind of look at the two videos and kind of see which one you think might work best for your project. So uh, the first thing you're going to do when you start APP is, is it's got definitely a lot more steps. Um, this section right up here is kind of your process uh, 0 through 9 and so you're going to just walk through those and there's no one click kind of load everything option there's a lot more steps to do as you walk through um, APP and there's a lot more options so we'll kind of look at some of those as we go through it uh, in the middle here we can see our images at the bottom we'll, we'll load those files and then on the right this is where we're going to use our stretching and different balances for contrast and such um, and we'll take a look at what that does at the end. So let's start off with uh, the first step and it's going to have you uh, take a look at um, what kind of uh, algorithm and pattern are you going to use. And I typically leave this where it's at. Um, it's got some different settings in here. You could play with these and they've got some nice tools if you just roll over some of these fields and let your mouse sit it'll give you a good definition and help guide as to what you want to do. Uh, but again, it's it's going to be set up in this area right off the bat um, with the, some good defaults. So again, I'm going to be loading the North American Nebula in a narrow band, so I'll do the hydrogen, oxygen, and sulfur. So you can see the, how that process works and compares exactly the same with Deep Sky Stacker video. So. I'm going to go to step one and it's going to want you to start off by loading your images and it's got a section here for all your lights and if you have masters um, if you don't have masters uh, it's entirely up to you on how you do it um, you can also come up here and have multi-session processing um, as well as auto detect and put masters with them it's a really cool feature I'll show you so let's go ahead and load this and I'm just going to open up my originals and I've got 30 images here, some in hydrogen, some in oxygen, and some in sulfur. It's going to pop up and say, well, what are these? Um, and this took me a while because I used to load them up individually and say, okay, these are all the hydrogen alpha, these are all the sulfur, these are all the oxygen. And it took a little bit longer. Now I just select them all and it'll load them all in there. If you have more than one session, this is pretty cool. Um, you can specify which session it is and then it will uh, kick that out as you um, create them. Uh, and in this case I only have one session so I just hit OK and OK. And you'll see down here it loads them up and it automatically split them out and said hey these are oxygen, these are sulfur, and these are my hydrogen. And so I don't have to really do that step where you gotta individually load them. It's a pretty good time saver actually. Just throw all your lights in. Now if you have flats, darks, and bias you can load them here individually. I have some masters so I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and load my master images and I have them all in my flats and this is flats 139 and you can say what you want to apply it to again you don't have to do this uh, but you could have them for different um, sessions the nice part is that even if you don't do this it will automatically assign your your master flats and your master darks and everything to the right channels so I just hit OK I'm going to do my master dark here and these were all 139 420s 
and I just want it across all channels and all sessions. I do have a master bias as well, so I'll go grab that. That's my 139. And just apply it across all channels. Now, if this is your first time, and you also have these little numbers right here that show you, you know, you've got your 30, you've got one here, one here, so if you kind of forget what you loaded. Um, I do have a bad pixel map as well, and this is great because the first time you run it, it's going to kick out a bad pixel map. And so I've also saved that as kind of a master bad pixel map for myself as well. And that's something that uh, I really like about Astro Pixel Processor. So here I've loaded them all in, and that's just step one. Step two is going to want you to calibrate them. And this is master bias. Uh, this is your master flats, darks. You can also create a bad pixel map. Again, this is one that already kicked out for me, so I'm using it, um, as well as some other settings in here. Um, you can create your masters if you haven't created a master, which is great. Um, that's where I save them and keep them in my library so I don't have to keep doing that over and over again. Um, so once you get all these in here, I just leave these as defaults. I don't really need you know rejection maps and all of that in my case so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit create master and assign the lights and all, and all this does is go through and actually assign which um, of your masters uh, down here are gonna go with which of these and because I have masters already built it's a pretty quick process just took a couple seconds so that's all it does there now we'll go to step three and we're gonna analyze the stars now if you, again, if you took a real deep deep space image, you might want to bump this down if you don't think you've got 500 stars. Uh, by default, I think most of us have 500 stars in an image, but if you don't, you could bump that down. And I'll go ahead and analyze stars. And while it's doing that, you'll notice as you scroll across here that you do not have star densities or quality scores. Same thing that Deep Sky Stacker does um, in their registration process. So we're analyzing the stars and then we'll register those stars. Uh, one thing that um, AstroPixel Processor does is it definitely takes more time in the processes that it does. So one thing if you have hundreds and hundreds of subs, um, APP is going to take a long time to go through those. Uh, where Deep Sky Stacker might be a better tool if you've got lots and lots and lots of subs and you just want to stack them. Um, so there is a difference there in what you're doing. Now if you take more uh, long exposures and maybe you don't have quite as many, maybe you have a hundred or less, um, APP is probably a pretty good tool because it tends to do a little bit better job with more settings. So that's one trade-off I see between the two. So I'm going to let this finish and I'll pause here and I'll come back in a sec. Okay, so that finished up. Um, just the analyzing star of 30 frames took about uh, a minute and a half to two minutes uh, on my computer. Um, so <clears throat> what we did here is we now see the star size and a quality score. And again, the quality score, just like in Deep Sky Stacker, it's pretty arbitrary. It doesn't mean a whole lot. You're just looking for major differences in the two. And you can click on any of your images and I'll double click on one and pull it up and see it above in the viewer. Now this is one thing I do like about uh, APP is it has some default stretching where Deep Sky Stacker we had to kind of move a slider around here I can come in and just pick some basic stretches and I can see that immediately on my images and that gives me a better um, stretch for flipping through them and viewing and throwing out bad subs that maybe you don't want um, again, you have the score here, um, and it also picked out an integrated reference um, uh, image. This is your best quality one that it thinks you have. Uh, you can see when you click on it, it's got the smallest stars. It's got the highest score. Uh, in general, it thinks that's your best image. Um, typically, that's going to be in your hydrogen layer there. Uh, as an, a reference and just think of that as the one that's going to put down and then the rest are going to stack around and, and it's going to pull off of that image for some detail. So uh, you can see as we go into our oxygen layer again as usual the stars are big and bloated uh, especially in this example. And we go down to sulfur 
I can click on those. Stars are pretty small, but I do like the feature here to stretch this, and you can you can adjust that. It's not actually stretching them; it's just giving you a preview stretch. So it's worth it's worth uh, it's worth having that nice little option because if you go back to no stretch, this is typically what you see in Deep Sky Stacker. <clears throat> And so that's a good tool just for previewing. And again, you can flip through and throw out subs um, that you don't like. Uh, this is a good time to do it while you're analyzing the stars. You can right click on any of these and you can just deselect them. The other thing I do like about Deep Sky, or I mean APP, is if I don't like them, I can delete them completely. And that way, if I come back and I've got five sessions, I don't have to sit there and keep flipping through the same images and keep removing them over and over again. If I got bad subs, just keep deleting them. And that way, you've got clean data as you move forward and the next time you go to stack or add more data. So, again, pretty cool feature here. Um, analyze the stars. We're going to go to the next one, which is registration. This is step four. Uh, registration again you can leave this on the defaults if you're going to do a mosaic um, and APP really accelerates in doing mosaics um, you can start that process here and it will adjust some things it will also ask you for some things to adjust um, so it, it's worth doing if in using if you're going to do a mosaic I really like that compared to Deep Sky Stacker uh, but for the most part I'm going to leave these on the defaults okay uh, and we're going to just go ahead and start registration and that's going to do some more analyzing of our stars and it's going to fill in some of our signal to noise ratios on some of these elements so I'll let that process oh it went pretty quick don't worry about it okay so here we've got some registration done <clears throat> we're going to jump to step five and it's got some extra steps to kind of enhance and normalize your your images one of them is neutralizing the background. Uh, I know in Photoshop there are some good tools out there like Gradient Exterminator and, and tools that help you do this if you use Deep Sky Stacker because Deep Sky Stacker doesn't have some of these extra features um, to normalize as well. So I'm going to go ahead and just normalize and neutralize the backgrounds on each of these. And if you're really not sure if it's worthwhile, one thing you can do is start stacking an image and then come back and stack another one with that feature and you can kind of see what it does different wise. So <clears throat> while it's doing this, there is another slider up here at the top which says how many CPUs do you want to use on your computer. You can bump that all the way up if you're not doing other processes. Um, if you want to work on something else while you have this running, you might move that down. But in this case, I'm just going to use 100% of the computer. Speeds it up just a little bit. And this is 30 images. Again, if you have 100, it can definitely um, take a while compared to Deep Sky Stacker. But again, these are features that just aren't available in that tool. Okay, so we're done normalizing. Uh, we'll go on to the next step, which is integrating. Uh, integrating, let me move this down so we can see all the options here. Uh, this is where you can pick out how many of the subs do you want. And you can see right now I'm doing 100 of the subs. I've only got 30 of them. You know, maybe you want to pick out just the top, you know, 85%. You can do that and kick out a few. That's entirely up to you and what you feel like your data is worth. Um, you know you can do some other things in here uh, one of them is really good is if you're doing a mosaic uh, you can turn on their uh, local normalization correction and this is going to basically run through as well as the uh, the uh, the multi-band uh, processing here so if you have you know for example a mosaic and you overlap images you know by seven percent you can come in here and enable this multi-band uh, process and it will actually get rid of the um, joining elements and it will actually normalize your uh, mosaic in a really good way so will local normalization and you can start out and do three iterations where it runs over your mosaic three times and if you still see some of that banding you can jump this up a little bit and run it again 
as well as blend your um, your system a little bit more by maybe bumping the percentage up so mosaic mode this is a really really good tool and this is probably what you're going to be paying for is some of these effects right here in the integration mode so this is one thing that deep sky stacker um, I would say APP definitely wins out it's just got a better process for mosaics in this area um, you can do some other things but as well as kicking out some uh, maps or drizzle um, I know DSS has drizzling too so if you want to increase the size of your your layout and then compress it in Photoshop you certainly can uh, but I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this on the defaults if you're just doing a single image um, there's really no reason to do your normalization correction or a multi-band process because um, there's just none of that there and the edges will crop out so we don't really worry about that that bleeding edge or a small rotation of the image so I'm gonna leave this as default when I do step six and integrate and I'll just say integrate and it says what's the name of your project I'll just say this is NGC 7000 and this is another step I really like about APP is I don't have to go through and kick out and say do just hydrogen just oxygen just sulfur uh, it's going to recognize these it already has that these are different channels and it's going to kick these out as separate images uh, for you and I really like that feature it helps me kind of speed the process up um, and do the things I want to do rather than trying to do kind of a monotonous step that's one downfall I kind of felt for deep sky stacker that I just don't want to have to go through and just check and uncheck hydrogen sulfur and oxygen on my narrow bands all the time just to kick them out it's a repetitive step I don't mind doing some of the settings but I just that's one step that annoys me and APP is very good about doing this so I'm gonna go ahead and pause this while we finish up and it kicks out my integrated images okay welcome back we are finished uh, <coughs> loading and uh, we've integrated our images here um, so this was step six in the process and what it does is it kicks out individual fits for each of your channels and of course this is narrow band um, with the three main um, filters that everybody uses so this is the most common method and you can see it loads up uh, the last one this is my sulfur image and it does automatic stretching over here for you and these are just previews right now and this is a great way for you to flip through and kind of look at it and say yeah it looks okay or no it doesn't um, this is one feature that you know DSS doesn't have this um, you can do some manual stretching but these are kind of some presets over here on the stretching side so at this point you're basically done you have your three fit files just like you got out of DSS um, the key now is you can kind of play a little bit with these and do a few extra things in APP so up to this point pretty much the same process I would say that took for 30 images about three minutes to actually integrate those uh, whereas DSS took maybe a minute minute and a half um, as well as I had all these other steps to go through so definitely a slower process in APP um, now let's take a look here um, again I've got my sulfur I've got my uh, oxygen that one looks bloated and I've got my hydrogen layer here okay so uh, one other feature here that we have is some nice options uh, with the tools so I can be done here I can actually move these into Photoshop or pics and site if I want to uh, or I can actually combine them into an RGB image right out of APP and this is something that DSS just doesn't offer um, I have another video I'm going to do on how to actually create an RGB image in Photoshop uh, with those DSS images um, which is just a manual simple process not hard to do but it's a nice option here to actually combine these and so I'm going to come over here to the tools and combine into an RGB image and we're going to add our channels and so what we do is we just find those three and we kick those three out right here for me so and it automatically even detects which uh, channel this is so it picks up that this is hydrogen alpha I just hit OK 
uh, I add another channel I add my oxygen and I add my third channel which is my sulfur and it picks these up automatically and shows you what they are and <clears throat> you can see over here on the left hand side it's just the mixer it's just showing you RGB and which ones going into which channel uh, what I'd like to do is use this pull down and you can actually flip through the different combinations that are commonly found for example if you want to do hydrogen sulfur oxygen RGB you can click new formula and that just resets all the sliders and then you can hit recalculate and it's going to automatically combine these into that um, into that color palette and you can sit here and preview and, and do some simple stretches on these and so you can kind of see which one you like and which one you don't okay now you see the predefined stretches over here 10 percent being the least and that jumps all the way up to 30 percent stretch it's a little aggressive um, I typically stay in the tens and I like to do a little bit more final stretching in Photoshop. Um, the sigmas, uh, you can do actual kappa sigmas and what these are going to do is run through and you're dithering, if you've dithered, it'll get rid of all those satellite trails in, in here automatically for you um, as well. You lose a little bit of signal to noise ratio when you do that, um, but it really does help take out some of the effects, especially if you're using one of those bad pixel maps. So sigmas aren't really bad to use in here um, at a real mild pace um, to get rid of any kind of star trails and, and things like that. Um, now I like to flip through and check out the different colors. This is kind of a, a fun thing. I just pick a new one. This is HSO2, a new formula, and then recalculate it. And it gives you a different color tone. This one tends to bring out a little bit more of the, the, uh, the highlights of the nebula. You can come in and do some basic palettes with Hubble. Um, this is going to be a stock one where, you know, your your hydrogen is green, 100%. Your sulfur, or I mean, your oxygen is blue, 100%, and sulfur is this. So it's going to create a very green image typically because hydrogen is so strong. Uh, but it, but with this North American nebula, it actually turned out pretty good because there is some other channel colors. Uh, you can also do Hubble too. This is going to be a little bit stronger and it mixes a little bit more of the other colors in there. Okay, The stars definitely went a little more white instead of that typical purple, but that's all easily fixed in Photoshop. So I like APP because of this. I can pick which palette I want to go with. This is HOO. And it just depends on the data that you have and which which one you like best at this point. Okay, I will typically use the Hubble standard color. This one right here and then I usually kick this out. And so what I do here, you can also mess over here on the right with all of your um, sharpness, your saturations, you can stretch it further white and black points. I like to do that personally in Photoshop and or Pixinsight. Just you get more you get more control in there versus actually creating it here and you can have a non-destructive workflow over in those tools where here it's pretty destructive. You're picking what you want and kicking it out. Um, you can also check here to neutralize the background. You'll notice it did a little bit. Uh, we've already done that in our subs when we ran through that process. Um, and you, <clears throat> when you get to this point and you're like, okay, this is what I want as a basic image, you don't want to have it fully stretched because you want to do that over in Photoshop, then you can actually save this out as a file. And the nice thing about this is you can save it as a FITS file or a TIFF. Um, if you're going to process it in Photoshop or something, you'll want to save it as a TIFF. RGB is fine. And then you're going to switch this to 16-bit integers so that you get all of that data over in Photoshop. And so what you've done is you've actually created and kicked out uh, your image. And we can see that here as a basic TIFF. Okay. So this is the actual power of uh, using um, APP. It also has some other great tools in here. Again, the tools section is kind of the finished section you can use. You can use remove light pollution. You can calibrate your uh, background. You can also calibrate stars. Um, it's a pretty neat uh, feature. 
you can come in here and select your RGB image that you just created. It's kind of a backwards process really because RGB down there is at the bottom when it should be kind of at the top. It's usually the first thing you have to do. You can't take out light pollution and you can't you know balance your background before you create the RGB so you gotta create the RGB first. Um, but it's got some of these tools in here uh, where you can calculate out light pollution it'll do that. Um, I'll cancel this. Again I kinda wish this button was up at the top since that's usually what you're going to do at the beginning. Um, you can calibrate your background, you can calibrate your stars it just wants you to open up the image you're going to use and then you use the tool and you can save those out as individual TIFFs over here um, which is handy and you can kind of see the difference of did it help, did it not help uh, so on and so forth. As you do these processes you will see that it just keeps saving the files in your system and you can see those in here. I can always open up that TIFF that I just created and I can manipulate it a little bit more. So now you get to decide which one is better. That's entirely up to you and your imaging and what you, you feel. I feel like on, on my end, I feel like APP is a pretty solid tool that you're going to use all the time. And so for me, the extra options are worth it. Um, some downfalls if I was going to compare DSS versus APP I think the interface is a little bit clunky <clears throat> I'm not a fan of it but again I'm a software developer so to me if I don't like it I would make a better mousetrap and I don't really want to do that so to me the tool it works it, it does a good job um, I think the features in APP are worth it especially when you jump into mosaic mode um, it's got some of those multi-band blending features that are worth it. DSS is faster. I think if I took really short subs, I would probably use DSS because this could easily take an hour or two in APP. Uh, but if I was going to kick out probably a final image, I would probably still stack my small subs in APP. So I'm a pretty big fan of it. I think it's worth it. Um, you take all that time to collect the light. It's probably worth having the best tools to, to do it. A uh, good comparison would be, for example, GIMP versus Photoshop and PixInsight. Uh, I think you can get there with GIMP. It's free, but it's not going to have nearly the quality of tools. And if you're going to use it all the time, it's probably worth buying Photoshop or PixInsight. So that's my take on the review of the two stackers and you can definitely download a trial from these guys and give it a go. Uh, I think most people will kind of get stuck with it. So uh, we'll see you in the other videos. We're going to take a look at um, some Photoshop, how to create RGBs there, and we'll see you on the other videos. Thanks.